different here this year. All right, y'all enjoying yourself so far? You ready to bust a gut? We have a gentleman coming up. His name is Burnell Holloway. I seen him at Caroline's one time. He's a very funny guy from BET Def Comedy Jam and, and all that good stuff. So y'all ready to laugh? Yeah. All right, here we go. My man, Burnell Holloway. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give yourselves a round of applause, first and foremost, for coming out tonight. Everybody in the building, clap it up for yourselves. This is a very, very nice event right here. Is this for the postal service? Clap it up if this is the postal. Oh, okay, I'm in the right building, okay. I love the food downstairs. We gotta give it up for whoever made those ribs. I don't know, those ribs is good, right? I saw you at the table two or three times. Those ribs are delicious. Oh, those ribs are finger looking good, weren't they? I tell you, when you have Christmas parties like this, it makes me wish I still had a job, ladies and gentlemen. This is nice. Now, if you've been on your job with the post office for more than five years, clap your hands. Okay, that's five years. Okay, all right, put your hand down. You've only been there five years. Don't start acting up. Yeah, five years. All right, 10 years. You've been with the post office 10 years. Make some noise. Okay, okay, all right. All right, we're gonna take it one more step higher. 15 years with the post office. Okay, we're losing some claps. we losing some claps. You notice that? All right, I'm gonna go with the top number. This is high enough going. 20 years or more. before I get into the jokes, man. I just want to say my name is Pernell Holloway. I'm originally from Newark, New Jersey. I just moved to Queens, New York, so y'all show me some love for coming to Queens. Yeah, like an idiot. You know what? I did not realize when I moved here, I did not realize how many tolls that you people pay here. It is ridiculous, sir. Clap if you pay tolls before I go too far. Clap. Oh, let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. I am so traumatized by the prices of the bridges and tunnels that every time I think about money, I equate it to bridges and tunnels. Yeah, my daughter asked me for $40. I said, girl, that's damn near two Holland tunnels and a Verrazano. Are you crazy, girl? We ain't got it like that. We in a recession. I might have a triborough on me or something like that, you know. <laughs> and, if you <laughs> and if you pay tolls, there's only one good thing about paying tolls. And that's if you got easy pass in your windshield. Am I right? Yeah, yeah clap if you got easy pass. Come on, let's see where y'all at. Okay. Don't you feel like you the big dog on the highway when you got easy pass? Is it just me? Don't you feel like you better than all the other drivers on the road when you got easy pass? I'm telling you, you ever pull up to the toll booths during rush hour and you look over in the cash lanes? Woo! It's like 20 cars waiting to pay cash, right? That's one time when cash can kiss my ass. I'm serious, y'all. I love my easy pass then, you know, until you drive through. And the Easy Pass people put your business out there? Yeah, you ever go through and the sign says, Go Low Balance? Yeah, see, some of y'all seen that before, right? I'm not the only one. See, I take it personally, y'all. I get upset. I'm like, that's between me and Mr. Easy Pass. You know, you put it out there for every driver behind me to see. I don't like that type of stuff. Yeah, one time I went through, my balance was so low, the sign said, pull the truck over. I said, I better pull over. They look like they're serious about this money in New York. <laughs> and I call them Bloomberg's boys when I get to the toll booths. You ever go to like the Midtown Tunnel and you ain't got enough money on your Easy Pass, that little arm pop down? Yeah, if you ain't got enough money, one of those armed guards come from behind that little podium like, come here, give me that Easy Pass. <laughs> they don't play, man. Like I said, I call them Bloomberg's boys. How many of y'all 
y'all support Michael Bloomberg? Clap. I didn't think so. I didn't think so. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know much about politics. <laughs> Look at him over there celebrating. I don't know much about politics, ladies and gentlemen, but I know a lot about thugs. Michael Bloomberg is a thug in New York City. He's a bully. You know, he is the only mayor to ever bully his way into three terms over here in New York. Am I right? Right? No other mayor got more than two terms, you know. As soon as he got in office, he started telling everybody what they could do, right? He told people who smoke, we can't smoke in the clubs no more. Right? Then he started messing with us about the trans fat with the fast food franchise. Remember that? Then the latest thing was the 20 ounce drinks. How many of y'all remember that? Yeah, but I'm telling you right now, if he would have messed with the Arizona iced tea, oh, I was ready to protest. You understand? Come on, y'all. The Arizona iced tea, 99 cents for 23 ounces of this shit. Huh? In this economy, you want to take that away, Michael? I will bust you up, Mr. Bluebird. <laughs> come on, y'all. Have you seen the can that this tea come in? This can is like a little neat trophy, this can. That's how big it is. The can is so big, they give you 38 cents back when you take it for recycling. And you won't mess up. You cannot hang out with people who do not have jobs. Yeah, it's that simple, you know. Because people without jobs, they do not respect the days of the week like you do. You, think about it. You work Monday through Friday. You look forward to Saturday, right? Saturday is a big deal. But to a person with no job, every day is Saturday. Right? It don't matter. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, Thursday, Saturday. <laughs> it don't make no sense, you know. How many Saturdays does one person get? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I used to be a union employee myself, so I can identify with some of y'all. I did construction work in New Jersey for local 472, man, for like 21 years, man. Y'all give it up for me. 21 years in the work world, too. But I'm gonna tell you the difference between me and y'all. When I got laid off, my white friends, when they called home, their women were very supportive. Yeah, white guy called home, the phone call be just like this, y'all. Hello? He'd be like, hey, Barbara, how you doing? Yeah, look here, Barb, I got some bad news. I'm getting laid off today. See, Barbara would say things like, don't you worry about it, Harold. You come on home and I'll fix you your favorite meal. See, that's how Barbara handled the situation. Let me call home and tell my woman I just got laid off. Totally different response. Don't tell me she's sleep. Hello? I'd be like, hey baby. She'd be like, yeah, what you want, what you want. I say, look here, I got some bad news. Click! You get to the house, they done change the locks. You knock on the door, your kids act like they don't even know your ass. They'd be like, who is it? I'd be like, it's your father. They'd be like, uh-uh, my daddy got a job. 